All right, guys, since we are not going to have uh, actual class uh, today, we're going to go ahead and go through the shell method so that you are familiar with how to do the shell method. And uh, so the interesting thing about the shell method is it's not actually on the AP exam, but it can be used on the AP exam. So according to the curriculum, you only really need to know disk and washer. But the problem that we saw with disk and washer is if you're going around a vertical revolution, it's not the easiest because sometimes you have to convert the equations into Y equations. Okay, X equals something, something Y. All right, that's not always an easy case. All right, so a lot of times if you're going around a vertical line, all right, revolving around something that's vertical, it's a lot easier to use the shell method. Now, I'm not talking about C shell. We're actually taking a look at if you were to take something like this, all right, this is a bunch of paper here, made it into a cylinder, all right? Well, if you open this up, you have rectangles. Well, the idea here is imagine that if you took the shape that I have on the screen right now and revolve this around the y-axis, all right? You're going to get this kind of hole in the middle here, and then you'll get an outer one as well. We see that this would be washer if we wanted to do washer, all right? But rather than doing washer, okay, what if we made this into a whole bunch of cylinders? And so when we say shell, it's actually more like a uh, shotgun shell here, all right? A whole bunch of cylinders that when you take them out, all right, you have the shape. It makes the shape here get a little stuck. But if you take those cylinders and split them down one side, what happens is then they open up to get a bunch of rectangles. Okay, imagine again, here's your cylinder. And if you just cut it down the side, we've done this a couple times, you get a rectangle. Well, again, volume is always just going to be the integral of that cross-sectional area. So if we're taking the cross-sections as these cylinders, Okay, we're just kind of going in from the top almost when you try and find this volume. Okay, going in from the top here. When you take those out, we get the cylinder, we open that up, our surface area is actually going to be a rectangle. And so our formula for shell is volume equals 2 pi integral from A to B rh. And where does that 2 pi rh come from? Now this can be dx because this is the reason we do this is so we can keep it in terms of dx. All right, the 2 pi r comes from our bottom of our rectangle. All right, that would have just been the circumference of our circle. And the h comes from the height of the rectangle. Okay, so like it says at the top, we use so that you can keep vertical revolutions in terms of dx, because most functions are going to be given to you in terms of x. Now, we need to be able to figure out the r and the h. Well, the way that we do this is we start on the axis, just as we did before. We go over until you hit the first line. That's going to represent your r. Okay, the r, we're going to do right minus left just like we've been doing, but it's always going to be in terms of x, which means this is always going to be x minus a number or a number minus x, okay? And the reason for that is this point here on the graph is x comma f of x. So you're going to think about it in terms of the x value there, all right? x minus, in this case, it would be x minus zero because the line on the left is just x equals zero. <clears throat> The h, we're going to go straight down from that point. That's going to give us our h. And h, we're just going to do top minus bottom, just as we've been doing before. And this one would just be whatever that function is, minus 0. OK, so that's really the idea of shell method. Let's do an example. And so we're going to go ahead and go through y equals x cubed, x equals 2, y equals 0 around the y-axis. So just like we've done with all the other problems, let's go ahead and graph this first. So we have y equals x cubed. 
x equals 2, y equals 0. And here's our region that we're working with. And we're going to take this around the y-axis. All right, so this is, should be a familiar shape. We did this in our 7-2 notes. And we use washer for that again. But with washer, again, we have to turn everything in terms of y. But this, let's go ahead and set up shell. All right, since it's a vertical revolution, use shell. And again, shell method, 2 pi, a to b, rh, dx. <clears throat> okay, so a to b, because we're dealing in terms of x, a to b is just going to be what is it shaded in terms of x, which usually is a lot easier to see. In this case, it would just be 0 to 2, since we're, sh we're shaded from 0 to 2 on the x-axis. Now our r, and our h. So we're going to start on our axis of revolution, go over until we hit the first line. So we're not going through the shading in this case. That's going to be our R. And then we go straight down. That's going to be our H. All right. So our R, like I said, is always going to be X minus a number or a number minus X. If we go right to left, this is going to be X minus, well, this is just zero. So X minus zero is our R, which is just X. H, top minus bottom. So top minus bottom is going to end up being our function. In this case, our function was x cubed, and our bottom is just that y equals 0, so 0. And this is just x cubed. So what we end up getting here is x times x cubed dx, or you could write it as 2 pi integral of 0 to 2, x to the fourth dx, which is a whole lot easier than dealing with uh, this cube root of y and doing the whole washer and everything like this. So shell tends to be a lot easier when you are working with a vertical revolution. Okay. Well, what we're going to do is actually take one shape and we're going to revolve it around a whole bunch and pick the easiest method to use to do this. And so on the test for chapter seven, I'm not going to tell you which method to use. You can use either or. So if you like disc and washer in terms of y, you can do that. But shell, I think, is still going to be easier in a lot of cases. So let's go ahead and go through this picture here. We got y equals square root of x minus 3. So let's actually graph this so we have an idea of what we're working with. And we're going to, like I said, use the same graph each time <clears throat> and just keep building off of it. So we got x or square root of x minus 3, which means it's going to be shifted 3 to the right x equals 7, vertical line at 7, and also our x-axis. So pretty much we're dealing with this region here. Hopefully that is something that we've seen a couple times. I'm going to copy this so that I don't have to keep drawing it over and over again. Okay, our first one is going to be the x-axis. So we're going to take it around the x-axis. And so if we were to go ahead and draw this, We've seen this picture already before. It's our Christmas ham. It's our spotlight, whatever you want to think of it as. But this would be one where there's no space. It's a horizontal revolution. We're going to use disk. And we're just going to set all of these up. We know disk is pi uh, a to b r squared dx. So we can see that this is shaded from 3 to 7. And our R, we start on the axis, go through the shading straight up. There's our R. And R is just going to be top minus bottom. Let me write this over here. Top minus bottom, our top is square root of x minus 3. Our bottom is just 0. So we're going to put that in square root of x minus 3 squared dx. And so that is going to be our answer for the first one. So x-axis, there's no space. We're using our disk method, and there's our setup. All right, so let's go ahead and do that same picture now. But this time, we're going to go around the y-axis. 
And since we're going around the y-axis with this, here's our chance to test out our shell method. Okay, I'm going to use shell since it's a vertical revolution. And again, our shell is 2 pi a to b r h dx. <clears throat> so 2 pi. All right, the nice thing about all these is since the shading hasn't changed, all of these limits are going to be 3 to 7. Okay, our shading hasn't changed at all. What we need to figure out is what's our r and what's our h. So we start on the axis of revolution again, over until we hit the first line and then straight through the shading. There's our R, there's our H. Now again, R is always X minus a number or a number minus X. In this case, our right minus left is going to be X minus zero again, X minus zero, which is just X. And our H top minus bottom top is our function. So square root of X minus three minus our bottom, which is zero. So this is just going to be x times h, which is square root of x minus 3. Put that dx on the end, and that's all there is to it. So there is our answer for our second one. Okay, so there's our y-axis. All right, now let's try y equals 2. Okay, paste that in here. y equals 2. <clears throat> I'm going to draw our line here. Now, if you plug 7 into square root of x minus 3, we get 2. So we see that it actually does hit there. We're taking this around this line. And again, if we were to go ahead and draw this, it's a horizontal revolution. And so we see that, hey, there's all this space here. And when we have all that space, it tells us we're going to use washer. All right, again, wash your formula, pi a to b, big R squared minus little r squared dx. So let's go ahead and set this up here. Okay, so volume is going to equal pi a to b. a to b hasn't changed, 3 to 7. We just got to figure out what is our big R and what's our little r. <clears throat> so big R, we start on the axis of revolution all the way through our shading. Notice I went down to go through the shading. And this time our top, our top is actually the two minus our bottom is zero. So our big R is just two. So I'm gonna put two squared in our integrand. Little r, little r, I'm gonna go ahead and change out our color here so you can see it. We start on here and we go until we hit the first line. So it's really tiny right there. In this case, little r is gonna to be top two minus the bottom. The bottom is our function. So square root of x minus 3. And so I'm going to actually put that whole thing in there. 2 minus square root of x minus 3 squared and dx. Good thing we're just setting these up, right? And so that would be our answer for this one, for part C. All right, so sometimes our r's do look kind of ugly. And if we had to evaluate that, we'd have to foil all that up. And uh, it gets a little rough, but... It's not terrible. You just have to do a lot of foiling and simplifying. <clears throat> All right, let's try x equals 7 now for part D. Okay, so x equals 7. Now what we're going to do is actually take this around this boundary over here. So if I take that around, what we get is that dome-looking shape here again. It's not the best drawing in the world. Yeah, it's a little better. All right. So notice that there's no space, all right, but it is a vertical revolution again. So you could do disk in terms of y, but I'm going to keep everything in terms of x here just because I think it's going to be easier. So I'm going to use shell again. All right. So again, we're going to do volume equals 2 pi. Our shading hasn't changed. It's still three to seven. What we got to do is find our R and we have to find our H. And so R, remember, we start on the axis of revolution. Let me change this to a darker color so you can see it. So we start on the axis of revolution, go through the shading and hit until you hit the first line. It just happens that our first line is actually the other function and straight down. 
Now here's where you gotta be careful. Here's our R, here's our H. Again, R is right minus left, and it's always a number minus X or X minus a number. In this case, here the right is actually seven. So seven is our number minus, this point on the graph is always the X. So our R is seven minus X in this case. H hasn't changed, it's still top minus bottom, and it's gonna be our function, square root of X minus three minus zero, or just square root of X minus three. So I'm gonna put that into our integrand here. It's gonna be seven minus X times square root of X minus three DX. Just like that, okay? And again, this one would definitely be light sensors. Light sensors so. All right, and so this one would definitely be one that um, we can't actually integrate this. Um, well, I guess we could, it wouldn't be that bad. We could do it, it'd be ugly, but good thing we're just setting these up. All right, let's try y equals negative one now. Okay, y equals negative one. We're gonna draw that dotted line down here for negative one. So horizontal line, we're taking it around. So now, kind of a weird shape because what we're gonna have is kind of like a, big old gap here in the middle, and then the outside is gonna be the one changing this time on us. So we see that space in between, we can see that right there. So this is definitely going to be a washer situation. All right, so pi integral, a to b, three to seven hasn't changed, love it. <clears throat> now we just gotta figure out our big R and our little r. So, Big R, we start on the axis revolution all the way up through our shading. Okay, so top, the top is actually that square root of X minus three minus our bottom. This time our bottom is negative one. So when we simplify that, that's actually going to be square root of X minus three plus one. And I'm gonna square it because it's big R squared minus little r squared. Little r squared, I'm gonna start on that line again and go up to the first line that I encounter. And that is actually gonna to be top minus bottom, zero minus negative one, and that will just be one squared dx. Okay. If I'm rolling too fast through these, feel free to pause it at any time, catch up, slow me down. I got one more of this particular graph and then we'll look at another one. All right, so last one on this one. We're gonna do x equals two. So x equals two over here somewhere. It's gonna be a vertical line. So right off the bat, I'm thinking I'm gonna do shell. All right, so that's gonna put us somewhere like this. Oh, that's really ugly. Good enough. Okay, so we see we have, it's gonna end up being washer if you were to do dy. Like I said, I'm gonna do shell again. So volume equals two pi, three to seven. And let's go ahead and set up our R and our H. From the axis revolution over to the first line, straight down. And now when we do our R, again, the line, the point that's on the function is always X in this case. All right, so this would be X minus the number that it goes to. In this case, the number is two. So X minus two and H top minus bottom. Really, this hasn't changed at all. This is still just square root of X minus three minus zero. So square root of X minus three DX. Don't forget those DXs on there. All right, so that's taking you through a bunch of different examples using the same graph. Now let's try one more a different picture and we're gonna do four different versions of this so that we can just see another, another example. This is actually the graph that um, I had in the very beginning of the notes. We have Y equals X minus X cubed and the X axis in the first quadrant. Okay, so remember if you have X minus X cubed, the way that we graph this is we're gonna find the zeros all right, so we're gonna take that X 
minus x cubed set it equal to zero. I'm going to factor out the x. We get one minus x squared. So we should know that that gives us x equals zero, x equals plus or minus one. And since we are dealing with a cubic, and it's an odd function with a negative lead coefficient, it's gonna start up down like this. Now we only want the piece that's in the first quadrant. So we're actually only gonna deal with this piece here. That's all we really wanna work with. In fact, I'm gonna get rid of all the other stuff because I don't really wanna deal with the other stuff. It's actually just gonna distract my picture. So I really just want this piece here. That's what we're going to work with here. And we saw that this is 0 to 1. So we're going to use this picture. Let me copy this so we can use it for future stuff. Perfect. All right. So our first example, A, we're going to do the x-axis. All right. And we see that it's flush against it. So we see that it's going to be a disk problem. And so we got pi integral from 0 to 1, r squared. So r, start on the axis straight up. There's our r, top minus bottom. r is just going to be our function x minus x cubed minus 0. So I'm going to put in x minus x cubed squared dx. All right, so there's our our first answer, B, we're going to do the y-axis. Okay, I'm going to go around the y-axis, which means I'm going to use shell. And that's going to be 2 pi, integral from 0 to 1, rh. Here's our R, here's our H. Our R is just going to be X minus zero. So X and our H top minus bottom, X minus X cubed minus zero. So X minus X cubed and then DX. That's all for that one. Y equals five. All right, y equals five, we're gonna be above this one. So it's gonna be somewhere up here. Horizontal, so I'm gonna do washer. All right, and so if I do washer, pi, zero to one again, we need to find big R and we need to find little r. And so with this, start on the axis of revolution, all the way through the shading, there's my big R. Top minus bottom. Top is going to be 5 minus the bottom. I put it in parentheses, x minus x cubed. All right, little r. I start on the axis. Go until I hit the first line. Top minus bottom is 5 minus. Oh, I totally messed up that last one. Scratch that. If only editing worked. All right, our big R is actually five minus zero, top minus bottom, the bottom is zero. Little r is the five minus x minus x cubed. And so now when I put this in, I get five squared minus five, I'm gonna distribute the negative, minus x plus x cubed squared dx. All right, and our last one, our last one was x equals one. So let's finish this off. All right, so x equals one. We're gonna take it around this guy here. It's vertical. So since it's vertical, I'm gonna use shell again. And so we have two pi, zero to one. Gotta find our r and our h. Start on the axis, over till you hit your function, straight down, r and h, r right minus left. In this case, 
our r is our our right is our number one minus the x so one minus x since this point on the graph is always x and h top minus bottom is going to be our x minus x cubed minus zero if i want to evaluate this one i would just have to foil that out and that would be our answer so that's putting it all together we got shell and we got disk and washer. I use shell anytime it's a vertical revolution. I use disk and washer whenever it's a horizontal revolution. And um, it typically works out a lot easier, um, especially if we're just setting up problems. All right, so practice the assignment. Use whichever method um, fits best. You do not, if it says you use shell for the entire assignment, um, know that if it's horizontal, I want you just to use uh, disk or washer. Okay, we only use shell for vertical revolutions. Okay, all right, hope this was helpful. We'll see you in class.